at some of the basics. So uh, we're going to be showing you some of the basics on how to use this tool. And um, yeah, I would go ahead and share my screen. So uh, Amaka, should I kick off already or we should uh, wait for others? We only have 15 people here. Should we, should we wait? Um, okay, we can give like um, two minutes for them to join in. So guys, go ahead and tag everyone on the Discord channel. Let them be aware that the class has started and so that we can have more people join in. So drop the message on your rooms, the project server and everywhere. So we should be starting once it's 12.05. I think that works fine. I can actually start now since we have 20 people here. All right, so welcome guys. And uh, uh, today we're going to be covering uh, Google Slide. Uh, we're simply going to learn how to, you know, create a simple presentation uh, files, your presentation that you can uh, use uh, probably uh, at your workplace or maybe for a class or for a session or even for meetings, right? So you can create a, a decks uh, or you can just, uh, you know, um, you know work on documents that uh, you plan to use for uh, any type of presentation actually right so uh, i'm going to show you a very simple hack on how to uh, open up uh, or how to create a new google uh, slide sheet uh, but i think uh, i would also make you understand uh, let's see let's go down to google slide a simple google search so we visit uh, slides.google.com um, Okay. Okay. So uh, we are currently on docs.google.com, and uh, you know from here we can create a blank uh, slide, or we can also select from a set of templates, right? So you see we have a template gallery, and we have some samples that you can work with. Um, yeah. But uh, for me, when I'm creating a new file, if I want to have like a blank uh, slide, what I would do is I'll simply go to slides.new, right? So this is a short way to, you know. Uh, create a new slide without having uh, to go through the uh, Google Docs, um, you know, uh, page, uh, or without having to go through your drive. But of course, if you are also on Google Drive, uh, you can also have access to. Let's go. I think that should be drive.google.com. Okay. So from Google Drive, you can click on New. Uh, let's see if, uh, yeah, so uh, for the new option here, we have uh, a list of uh, services that we could uh, create, right? A new document, a new sheet, a new slide, or even a new form. So I can click on that. Um, and I think if I also click on this, you know, it's going to give me an option to select uh, from a blank presentation or from a template. All right. So uh, this is just, uh, you know, how you could uh, create a new file. If you're doing that from the drive or you're doing that from the, uh, the Google uh, Docs uh, you know, page, uh, or, you're, or you decide to do that from the, short, uh, from the shortcut uh, slides.new. So I believe you uh, understood that. Let's move on to the next session. Uh, let's assume I try to work with the templates, you know, just to make things faster for me. I can decide to 
pick uh, a sample template from um, what we already have here from the gallery. Uh, let's work with this uh, template consulting proposal. Uh, this is simply going to uh, give us a template we can work with. Uh, I think the most important part is getting to understand the uh, interface uh, or the environment, you know, uh, the tools and, um, uh, you know, the, the uh, permissions and, uh, you know, how you can actually share or collaborate with others uh, on the same slide. Um, we're going to talk about uh, each and every one of those uh, things I just mentioned. We're going to pick them one after the other. So uh, this is a very simple template, right? Uh, basically, on this side, you have um, the slides. You have multiple slides, you know, uh, arranged um, uh, in a very simple grid. So you just have to move from one slide to another, right? And then you have an option here. Uh, using this option, you can actually view all the slides uh, in a grid format, right? So this is a grid and you have like, um, three slides uh, arranged on, on, on one line. So you have uh, all your slides layered in such a way that um, you, know, you can visualize everything uh, in a single uh, glance, right? So let's move on to the other, to the previous uh, view. And uh, what, what you can see here is that you have a bunch of uh, settings, you have a bunch of tools, and then you're know, using these tools you can customize uh, your slide. This is basically your working area. This is where you add your text, this is where you add your images. And um, yeah, I will show you how to uh, create a very simple uh, slide. Uh, on this other side, you have uh, some tools that, you know, some Google uh, um, uh, tools that you can also make use of. Um, and yes, you can also get add-ons, right? So um, the Google uh, set of products, uh, of course, most of them uh, have the option to, uh, you know, they have the option for add-ons. And uh, what add-ons will do for you basically is um, uh, the ability to add more, uh, you know, integration, right? So you, can, you can integrate more uh, tools into your environment, right? Uh, I can see some people are dropping messages. Okay, so someone is asking, how did you change the slide? Yeah, okay, Sorry, is, is someone... Please mute yourself. Can you... Amaka. Yes, I'm here. I think you about that. I would just have to mute everybody again then ask if you meet. I'm coming, Mav. On that. So Mav, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Thank you. When you, join, when you join a workshop like this, you know, just try your best to uh, meet yourself. Okay, so um, someone is uh, asking, uh, how did I uh, change the... So basically, this is, this is the option right here, okay? So uh, using this option, you can get this view. Uh, this view will show you the uh, your slides. You know, on a single glance, you can see uh, the pages you have, right? And then this, you, of course, you can zoom in, you know, you can zoom in and zoom out. All right, so, um, all right. And then um, this is the default view. Okay, so I was trying to make you understand that we have uh, an option for add-ons uh, and integration. So you can actually integrate more tools like uh, Lucid Chart, which is basically a diagramming uh, tool. Um, that's also a collaborative tool, right? So the collaborative diagramming tool, you know, for coming up with diagrams and, uh, you know, you can have uh, a, a very seamless way to, integrate some of the diagrams. You see we have more than 10 million downloads, right, uh, on some of these tools, right? So uh, there are so many integrations here. And of course, you know, you can search uh, if you want to. You can actually search. Uh, I'm very sure that um, we will find uh, a Zoom integration, sort of like, you know, Zoom integration. I, I think so. But yeah, if we don't, if we don't have any tool, um, you know, for integrating uh, Zoom calls, uh, I believe we can also search for uh, a bunch of other tools, right? Uh, we have some to-do uh, tools as well, uh, you know, for task management and all that, yeah? So you can definitely uh, check out the uh, marketplace and, uh, you know, uh, get to see if uh, you would find any tool that you need uh, for your specific uh, workflow. All right, so let's uh, let's get off that option right now, but uh, that is simply how to add the uh, add-ons. Um, yeah, and what you can also do is, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, you can schedule uh, calls so you can actually schedule a Google Meet session, uh, you know, to have someone joining you and uh, probably, you know, take a look at uh, the slides, right? Take a look at your slide uh, or, or probably have you present your slide to that person 
or probably you know even work on the slide with that uh, particular person. So you can you can start a new meeting from here directly. Uh, you can also drop comments, right, or preview comments. So basically, when you right click on any section of your slide, you can uh, you can definitely drop a comment. Okay, so uh, you can definitely drop a comment by clicking on comments, right? So you have the comment option. So I can comment on this saying, um, "Do you think this is the right?" um title for slide for the deck okay and uh, if i have someone working with me on this file um you know that person is going to uh, reply or respond to this message so let's assume i have someone if i share this file by clicking on the share button you know we're going to cover uh, we're going to cover uh, you know how to really work on this uh, slide how to exit this slide uh, but i wanted us to cover these uh, features first so that uh, you know it doesn't take much of our time and uh, we don't waste too much time on this call okay um but basically we can actually invite people right so if you have i can invite you know, john doe at gmail.com and uh, you know when john doe joins this file um he would have access to you know respond to my uh, comments okay um of course i can share this file publicly if i want to right currently it's uh, restricted uh, which is the default and the only people with the access to this file can access the file. Um, yeah, but I can actually set this file to, uh, to make it accessible to anyone with the link. Uh, if that is what you want to do, then you know, this is simply how you do that. But for privacy and uh, security, uh, the default is that uh, this file is restricted. So only those with, um, uh, with access to this file can open uh, this file when you share the link. All right, so let's leave that for now. And um, yeah, before we talk about the uh, other sections, uh, you just need to understand that when you have someone on this file previewing your comments, when they click on the comments, it's going to take them to the um, the object or the selection, you know, that you commented on. And uh, of course, they can reply. They can reply by tagging you, or they can reply by tagging someone else if you have multiple people on this document. Uh, but you know, when you, when you want to tag someone, you would have to use add symbol, right? Uh, just similar to what you might uh, do on social media, but uh, let's assume we're not uh, doing that here. I'm simply going to say, um, I think the title is fine, sorry. Fine. Let's proceed to the demo. All right, so this is simply how you reply if this was a different account, right? And uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, uh, the person that uh, you have invited to review uh, your comments can actually um, resolve you know, resolve that uh, uh, issue by using the, um, yeah, by simply using that, uh, you know, the, 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 the check, the check, um, the check symbol that you saw there. Okay, so once you check that, uh, it's going to mark the document as a result. All right. Um, yeah, so I think that is, that is fine. So let's, let's talk about, uh, you know, exiting uh, a new, uh, a new sheet, uh, a new, a new slide, sorry. Before we come back to this, we're going to come back to this. Uh, but before we do so, let's just uh, work on a new, um, a new slide. All right. So of course we have some default themes. You know, even if you want to work on a on a new uh, slide, you can choose to work with some of these themes. Uh, but um, yeah, you can also import your theme if you have like um, a pre-designed uh, theme. But I'm going to leave that for now, and we're going to do everything from scratch. All right. So now we have a new uh, an empty an empty slide, you know, you can choose to work with the default uh, layout. Basically, this is the default layout we have, or we can also choose to, uh, you know, just take it off, you know, let's say we don't need that uh, layout. And uh, now we can choose to have our own, um, you know, our own implementations. So I'm going to simply say uh, business presentation. Um, oh, let's just say uh, product sales pitch, all right? And uh, you know when you have a text field like this, uh, you can actually set the properties, right? So you always have the controls. Uh, you have a bunch of uh, you know uh, controls here, and on this other side, you have you know some set of properties that you can apply to that uh, control. Okay. So uh, before we talk about some of these menu items, I will just uh, make you understand that everything you put on this page is uh, is uh, something you would rather refer to as an object, right? This is an object, and every object, of course, would have you know, some set of customizations, uh, which are the properties, okay? Um, so let's assume we're trying to customize this. I would simply, you know, you know, increase the, uh, the font size. So maybe we can work with like 45 uh, and um, we can extend this a little bit, make it bold, 
okay? And uh, probably move it down to the center. And yeah, I think uh, when moving this, it's, uh, you have some set of lines that would uh, you know, make you understand if you're currently, um, you know, uh, if you have reached the center of your documents. So we can leave this right here. We can also insert more items like images, shapes, and all that. Um, yeah, and I will go ahead to show you how to insert images and shapes and how to customize those shapes as well. Uh, but uh, more specifically, I wanted you to understand the fact that, uh, you know, we just added an object, right? So that is the first step. We've been able to add one object. Before we proceed to adding more objects that you would um, you would use, uh, you know, for, for your slides, uh, I would first show you, and this is something I forgot to show you, uh, this is simply our how you can rename your file, right? Or how you can rename your slide. So uh, let's rename this slide to product sales pitch. All right. So uh, using this option, which is the star option, you can basically mark this file um, as a favorite file, which means that it will show up um, on your list of uh, files marked as favorite, uh, which means it's, going to, it's simply going to, going to sit at the top, right? It's simply going to sit at the top. So uh, I just marked this file. As one of the favorite files. I can also use this to move the file to a different location or a different folder. Uh, if I have a folder in here, so let's assume I have a folder and I call this um, sales decks, right? So all my sales deck. Uh, I can come back here and I can, you know, choose, I can choose this. So which means I am trying to move uh, the product sales pitch into the sales deck, right? So when I click on move, um, it's going to organize that file and it's going to move that automatically. Uh, so now you see we have a message here saying the product sales pitch has been moved from my drive to the sales deck uh, you know, folder, basically, okay? So let's go ahead and dismiss this message. And uh, yeah, finally, you have this option letting you know that your file has been saved uh, to the cloud. Uh, if you lose internet connection, then uh, definitely uh, this is going to give you a signal letting you know that uh, you are no longer connected and uh, you are currently offline. Um, and I, I will be able to show you that, of course, because that is going to disconnect me from the call. But um, yeah, just in case uh, you uh, get any signal telling you that your file cannot be saved, uh, I think you would probably want to review your internet connection. Okay, so uh, next you have your file. You know, you have a bunch of options in the file menu. We won't have the time to go through every single one of them. Uh, but um, uh, the activities uh, or the actions you have in the file menu uh, basically describe the activities that you can perform when trying to save or create a new file or share a file or send uh, or send a file uh, which is this slide right or send that slide via email or even download the slide you know as a powerpoint uh, file or maybe as an otp uh, or pdf file you know you have multiple formats here and you can also make this available offline if you have the google uh, drive um, uh, if you have a google drive uh, uh, desktop uh, or offline app and then you can also check the history you know what has happened on this file over time who made changes what changes were made what were at what 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 new objects were added to the slide so um, you have the version history option to give you those set of details right you can also rename this file you can move this file which is basically what we've you know seen at the top here uh, you can move this file to trash which is basically deleting it and having it in your trash for some days uh, or you can you know go down to your trash and ensure you delete it completely from the drive uh, if you want to do that you can add there uh, you can add this as a shortcut uh, to your drive so that it will be easy to uh, you know also assess that you can publish it to the web which means um it's published to the web you have a web url and you can share that url with multiple people you know they can assess it directly on the web um, this will show you the document detail you can change the language uh, or the language of the uh, you know, environments uh, you have here or the file you know uh, you have page setup you have uh, the print option and uh, on the edit menu you have a list of uh, actions so basically this menu carries actions right and remember some of these actions have uh, shortcuts so um, if you wish to use the shortcut i think it's also a good way um, to to make your workflow even faster right so you have undo redo which is command z or control uh, control Z, I think if you're on Windows, okay. Um, yeah, you have actions for copy, cut, you know, paste, paste without formatting, which is paste that specific item. If it's a text, take off all the formatting and just simply give me the text, you know, that is what I need. Uh, you can delete, duplicate, you know, find and replace, you know, these are some basic actions that you've performed on some other tools. And, uh, you know, yeah, they, 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 they are still the same 
uh, they, they still have the same uh, functionalities of this app as well. So on the view, you can basically enter the slideshow, uh, you can set motions, you can actually uh, build up a new team, um, you can switch this to a grid view, you can also zoom into the slide. Um, yeah, so you can also turn on guides and uh, which is kind of like the rulers, uh, just to ensure that everything is, uh, you know, properly aligned uh, if, you, if you want to do that. Um, yeah, so I, I just quickly had to glance through these items, you know, we don't have to select uh, each and every one of them, but from the explanation and even from the name, you know, it's uh, quite uh, explanatory. Uh, if you don't understand anything that I said and that you want me to touch on any particular, you know, uh, uh, item that I've mentioned, uh, feel free to let me know in the chat and I will know that, um, you know, you, you want me to do so, I'll just go ahead and uh, do a recap on that specific action. Uh, but we're going to focus on your sets, right? We're going to focus on your sets. Um, and I think uh, this is the important part. Okay, so basically you would want to insert a bunch of images, right? If you um, if you love to make your uh, presentation very visual, uh, you would definitely want to insert a bunch of images. Uh, you can actually upload images, you know, that you have on your uh, local machine, right? So um, I am currently on my image directory and uh, I have a bunch of images here. I am simply going to select a sample. Oh, okay, so let's let's uh, go down to pictures, um, comrade. So let's select. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, this is basically the sample image I have here, and you see I can actually stretch this image. You know, uh, stretching this image from the side is basically going to leave the uh, you know the, the the scale. You are going to have the same. Uh, you know, you are just extending the scale of that image, but it's not going to affect, it's not going to make that image look distorted in any way. Uh, if I select the image from the bottom here, you see we have, um, you know, kind of like this uh, squashed image. It's not really looking uh, smooth. So if you want to ensure that you have uh, a, a good scale for your image, uh, you can scale the image from the side. Um, yeah, and if you want to crop your image, all you have to do is double click. When you double click on that image, uh, you can definitely, you know, crop, right? And when you crop, you can also move the image inside, uh, you know, just like what I'm doing right now, okay? So that is something you might want to do, and that is how you do it. When you scale the image, uh, you, you see that that image is, you know, automatically cropped um, based on the fact that I cropped it, right? I cropped the image. So uh, let's use Command Z uh, to take off the uh, crop feature. And uh, that is simply how you uh, import your image from your machine. Um, something you might also want to do is, um, you know, to search uh, on the web for images. So, um, you know, you can do the Google image search from here. So I'm simply going to search for Comrade. And yes, you're going to have um, a bunch of images. Uh, let's just change this. Search term is not the best. So let's just say um, beautiful. Uh, so we're doing a product sales pitch. Uh, so let's just say mobile app all right i'm going to take this off for now uh, let's take the comrade image off by simply selecting on that and clicking on delete so someone said product sales pitch uh brought to you by comrade bar yes <laughs> all right so let's go ahead and uh, select a random image we have here so i'm going to select uh, this uh, image I'm going to insert that image so that is going to give us this uh, snapchat uh, mobile app image. So, I mean, this, this looks good. Um, one thing you, you really have to uh, deal with yourself is, uh, you know, uh, working with, uh, trying to understand uh, how to create good layouts. Okay, so because of the scale of this image, uh, what I'm simply going to do is uh, I'm going to, I'm going to actually scale this image very well, you know, and I'm going to take it down a little bit, but I want it to, you know, cover this entire session, right? So this is basically what I want to do. Uh, yeah, looking at it, you see it actually goes beyond our um, our section. So I'm going to double click and then I'm going to crop this, right? I'm going to crop this, but I'm going to crop it in such a way that, um, you know, uh, I can, I, I, I would love basically, okay? So I'm going to uh, move this down here, double click and then, uh, you know, try to adjust. So you really need to, uh, you know, work on those adjustments from your own end and then uh, ensure you've gotten what you want. So I think I, I, I do like this. Um, I like this. 
And of course, I can choose to add like a company logo or something to this other side uh, if I want to, to the, to the right hand side. Uh, but this is fine for my first page. And uh, yeah, the next thing I want to do is to you know uh, insert a new page, right? So uh, how would you do that? I would simply click on the plus to give me a new slide. Now I have an empty slide. Uh, of course, I can also select this and uh, you know duplicate um, if I want to duplicate this. So I can click on duplicate side when I right click, and that is going to duplicate the slide. And um, you know just uh, imagine you already have like um, a perfect template that you've created yourself. You can actually duplicate that and you know edit that if you want to. So uh, to delete that, I simply selected the item or the slide and I clicked on the delete key on my keyboard. Or you can also right click and you know delete. All right, so this is uh, a new slide. Um, before we proceed, uh, we would like to, um, on the new slide, we would like to finish up with uh, the image uh, the image options here, right? So you can actually import an image from your drive. If you have an existing image on your drive, you can click on drive and uh, you can import an image from your drive. I, I don't have any image on this drive. This drive is totally empty. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, so I definitely don't have any. Uh, but if I do have images on the drive, I can simply select on that uh, image and uh, you know bring in that image here. And yeah, let's you know, let's go ahead and um, so I think it's uh, drive.google.com. So I'm going to look for a very uh, lightweight image. So let's go down to pictures, um, top universe. So I think this image can surface. Let's see. All right. So we're currently on the drive. I'm simply going to create a folder by simply right clicking new folder images. Okay, so now I have a new folder or directory created in my drive. Uh, I'm just going to drag this in here and we're going to have that image uploaded uh, real quick. So that image, I think that image is lightweight. Uh, it's also giving me the option to download this on my laptop if I want. So if you really uh, like to save items on your drive, it's a good idea. Remember, you have it in gig by default. So we're not really talking about Google Drive today, but um, these are just some few things you need to note. All right, so coming back here, I can simply refresh, you know, refresh the drive. Uh, let's go down to images. So by default, we have that loaded already. I'm simply going to click on the image and I'm going to click on the set. So we have that image right here. So that was pretty fast. Uh, let's make sure we align things properly. Um, all right, and uh, you know, in here I can have a bunch of text, so I can choose to uh, simply click on this and uh, put in my text. Uh, before we get to that, let's uh, talk about the last, I think is that the last option? Oh, we have more options. So if you have images on your Google Photos, you can actually you know, bring those images in here. I definitely don't have any image on my Google Photos and uh, we're not going to do that. But if you have images on your Google Photos app, right, on your phone, uh, if you are also using the same Gmail on your mobile, um, yeah, it's definitely going to synchronize and you have those images show up here, okay? Uh, and um, back to the insert image, you can also insert image uh, images via uh, URL. So let's assume we go down to uh, a flash. Now I'm showing you this more this set of options because you are going to be working with images a lot, right? So if we go down to on splash and uh, yeah, I, I love the Microsoft 365 uh, images. So I'm simply going to click on this and I'm going to right click. I'm going to copy uh, image address. And um, back here, I'm going to simply you know paste this in um oh good so we are able to insert that uh, specific image uh so let's assume we have a new slide um i can simply uh yeah I can simply copy or cut this control x uh, take these items off and paste this in here also scale this uh you know to fit um to fit our page all right so um Always remember, if you have something that uh, is too much for the scale, you can always you know, crop. Okay, good. So uh, this is what we have, and this is what, um, yeah, so this is how you insert images using uh, you know, the link uh, or the URL. Uh, and I think the final option there is my camera. So you can you know, take images or take pictures and they just have it inserted in here. So uh, the next item is the text box, right? Very important, you want to communicate that, uh, you know, using text as well. Uh, so by clicking on the text box, that is the same option that you see here. And the images option is what you see here as well. So these are kind of like short ways to uh, assess those um, uh, actions, right? So you can simply click on this, you know, or do that from here uh, to give you the text box. 
and uh, you can you know have the text uh, in here so for example i can say um, this um the i don't know let's say a uh, pitch okay okay the um mobile app uh, is simply an educational app um you know for young um, business uh, techno uh, now I don't know if I spelled this correctly, but I, I also think uh, if it's wrong, uh, if it's wrong, I think yeah Google would uh, you know notify you. So yeah, so I think this is correct, and um, I can choose to format this item, you know, make this bold if I want to, increase the size of you know just that item if that is something I want to do. Um, remember that uh, it's always uh, you know up to you. Uh, if you want to format things that way. So formatting is really flexible. That's what I'm trying to make you understand. Uh, within this specific uh, control, formatting is really flexible and it depends on what you are trying to uh, achieve at the end of the day. You can change the colors, right? You can change the colors. You can add some uh, level of spacing if you want to. Uh, I can choose to uh, change the color here. So we'll call this uh, Mobly app. So we can simply say Mobly. Uh, it's an educational app all right so for mobile we can you know change the color right here um you know you can choose any color you want to um, work with uh let's choose something light uh something around uh, okay this color all right so yeah that's how you change the color you can of course apply these other formatting options you can make it bold you know you can make it bold by simply selecting that text making it bold uh, italized you know underlined if you want to uh, and also even highlighted, so you can actually have it highlighted you know, just like this. All right. Okay. So um, let's leave it at that. Basically, those are some of the formatting options you have. Um, and yeah, remember you still have alignment, left alignment, center alignment, you know, right alignment, and also justified if you want it to be justified. Uh, let's leave it this way. And uh, yeah, the other item is basically the line spacing. You can have 1.5 line spacing. It applies line spacing uh, in between the text. You have. Um, uh, yeah, this is 1.5. I think the first option there was 1.15. Okay, then you have double line spacing as well. Let's just take it back to the default single line spacing. And you can also apply bullets. So, so if uh, you want to add, you know, uh, a set of um, items, you know, like um, an unordered list, you can simply use bullets, uh, you know, this bulleted lists, right? Uh, or you can also use uh, the ordered lists, you know, which is numbers or maybe your Roman numerals. Uh, yeah, so that is your ordered list. So you have on other list and your other list. Uh, you can also set up, uh, you know, decrease or increase uh, the indentations um, using these options. And um, yeah, you can change the font type, right? You can change the font type. Uh, this is the font size, this is the font type or the font face. Uh, you can also add the border, right? You can add a border and set, you know, the border width using the uh, other option that I just showed you. So uh, if I select this item, you know, I can simply add a border using this option. And uh, you can check, you can change the border color. Right? This is the border color. Uh, this is also a field if you want to have a field. So we can set a field, and you know that is uh, completely black. Then you can change the text color maybe to white, and this is what you have. Okay, so these are simple formatting uh, tricks, uh, and then uh, uh, I won't really call that tricks. These are simply you know actions, right? So um, yeah, so let's let's continue with what we have on the insert session, right? So you can insert images, text. Uh, how about videos? Yes, you can insert videos. Let's go ahead and um, you know create a new slide. And on the new slide, I'm going to take this off. And let's try to insert a video. And uh, I just have to click on insert video. Uh, I can insert videos from YouTube uh, either by the URL. If I already know the URL, if I don't know the URL, I can search. So I can search for um, you know let's search for data dog. Uh, which is a tool I just you know recently uh, used. I think I used that. I used this tool yesterday, but I'm still trying to you know understand some things about uh, the tool itself. So it's basically for um, observability uh, and monitoring. So I'm going to select this specific video. I'm going to insert this video, and um, this video is going to be placed inside our slide. And of course, you can play this video, right? There are some bunch of options here. Maybe you want this video to start at a, at a specific time and end at a specific time. You can do that. You want this video to play on click or to play automatically. You can do that. And this is basically describing, you know, when you present this file, right? When you click on slideshow. 
All right, so um, uh, let's let's select the play or click. You know, let's increase the size uh, a little bit. Okay, I think this is fine. And let's just you know preview what we have. So when we click on slideshow, uh, we can simply click on play, and we have that video play. Right. So this video is called Data Dog is an infrastructure monitor. All right. All right. So let's take this off. You know, let's delete. It. Let's just delete that file. Um, and yeah, so that's how you insert videos. You know, insert from YouTube by searching for that video or um, a URL. Uh, by pasting the uh, YouTube URL. So you basically only insert, you know, videos that are, you know, uploaded to YouTube. All right, so um, if you have any question, I see that uh, questions are not coming in yet. Uh, go ahead and drop your questions because I am looking at the chats. Oh, someone dropped a question saying, um, could you show us again how you search images from Google? All right, so yeah, so to, to uh, import an image from Google, you simply have to click on image, right? And you have to say search uh, the web. And then you can search, right? So you can search from here. We can search. Um, we can search. Uh, a doctor. Oh, let's search for. I don't know. A doctor. Oh, I saw the video. So let's search for the video. And um, yeah, so we can actually insert, you know, any of these images by simply, you know, clicking on that image. And uh, clicking on insert. Okay, so that's how you insert images from Google. So let's delete that for now. And uh, I hope I explained that well to you, Michael. So let's proceed. Uh, you know, the next item we want to select now is uh, importing um, shapes. So you see, we have uh, different type of shapes. Uh, we also have arrows, we have callouts, we have um, mathemat mathematical shapes, right? Addition, subtraction, and all that. So these are the you know default set of shapes. Uh, remember that if there are some shapes you're looking for and you don't have them here, of course, you can actually import those shapes as images if you design them on a different platform like Figma or Sketch. Um, yeah, so let's just say we bring in uh, a shape. You know, this is a very simple shape. Uh, we can also get those shapes from here. This is a short form, you know, to have those shapes added to your file. So we can actually select a shape, you know, like this. You know, um, we have more shapes in here. So let's go back to shape. Uh, let's bring in another shape. All right, so these are simply how you bring in shapes. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's quite straightforward and I hope you understood that. Let's go back to inserts. And uh, the next thing we have here is tables. So you can insert tables if you want to work with tables, right? So this is an example of a table. And of course, uh, you can customize this uh, table. You can add items to the column and rows. So if we say we have uh, the name, uh, the dates, you know, the time, uh, email, you know, so let's assume these are the items you have. Uh, you can choose to delete some se some sections if you uh, if you don't want to work with that section. Yeah, you can delete some sections. Take it off uh, by simply selecting and uh, you know deleting um, the section. You don't want that, so just take it off. So we can also delete the session. Select deletes. Okay, and in here we can enter some sample details. John Doe. Uh, let's say 10, 10, 20, 28, uh, 20, 28. Okay, so for the time I can say. 12.00 p.m. And uh, for the email, I can say John Doe at gmail.com. All right, so um, we can also uh, decide to extend this if we want to, you know, um, just make some adjustments. So uh, yeah, so this is basically how you insert a table. Um, I think I can take that off as well or probably move to a new slide. And uh, in the new slide, I can um, go back to insert and I can insert a chart, right? You can insert a bar chart, column chart, line chart, pie chart, you know, or you can even insert a chart from a Google sheet file if you already have one. Let's just insert a simple uh, pie chart. And of course, when you select this pie chart, you can, uh, you know, um, you can customize the values you have on this uh, chart. So you can go down to format option. You see we have size and rotation. We have a uh, position, we have uh, the color, we have, uh, adjust some adjustments here. So yeah, you can choose to um, you know make some of those adjustments. Uh, and uh, I think uh, this chart is basically going to take us to um, an Excel sheet. You know, so we can customize the value we have on this chart. Uh, so all I did was uh, select this you know drop down. And I clicked on open source. So it takes it. Uh, it took us down to the uh, the source. And you know we, we can definitely edit you know the values uh, that are giving us uh, or the values the value giving us this. Uh, you know, this chart, you know, so we can do that uh, from um, the spreadsheet from Google Sheets. All right. So let's let's show, let me show you again. So back here, you see, I just did 
the same thing, open source, and they brought us down to this uh, page. So let's uh, let's take that off for now. Um, if you want to um, use, uh, you know, your charts, uh, most of these charts are going to be coming down from uh, Google Sheets, right? And then you have to customize it. You know, you can customize it in Google Sheet and uh, you know have it show up here as well. All right. So that is simply uh, how to work with charts. You know, for diagrams, you know, we have uh, some samples, you know, or templates. You have process diagrams, you have timelines, you have hierarchy for organization chart and all those kind of stuff. You have relationships, uh, you know, relationship diagrams uh, that will show the relationship between the uh, objects. So I can click on the relationship diagram and probably select um, a diagram that I think uh, we, we could use. So this can, uh, this can be used to show the relationship between, you know, set of items and uh, probably their level of um, uh, hierarchy. Uh, yeah, of course, as a, you know, level of hierarchy uh, for the, bigger items showing uh, the items with uh, more dominance uh, on the diagram. So, I mean, it depends on, on what you want, but of course you can customize this. You can add even more objects if you want to. You can delete some of the objects as well. That is just a simple diagram. Someone said, is it possible to do a workflow here? Well, it is possible to draw a workflow in so many diagramming tools, but there are some specific tools uh, that I would recommend for workflow uh, design depending on the workflow you're trying to implement as well. So when you say workflow, I believe you're trying to talk about process workflow. Um, of course, if you're trying to refer to process workflow, uh, you can use some of the samples here, but um, I personally would not recommend, you know, using this kind of tool um, for process workflow diagrams, right? Uh, there are some other tools, you know, diagrams.net, uh, Lucidchart, you know, um, I think we have Kawemo by Kamunda. So you can check out some of those tools I mentioned, but, um, yeah, if you just want to have like a list of, you know, processes showing your workflow in your organization, you can also use this and, you know, you just list out some of those processes, but I'm sure that is not what you are trying to ask. So let's take this off, you know, let's just call, maybe I can leave this and then, you know, move on to a new slide. All right, so I hope I answered your question, Favor. Um, yeah, let's try to insert, uh, so this is, this is really old fashioned, right? And I'm, I'm so surprised that, uh, you know, uh, when I saw this name, uh, the, the term word art, you know, I remembered, uh, you know, I remembered if, if you've been, uh, if you've been a, a Microsoft Office uh, user, maybe since uh, 2005, 2006, uh, you probably remember word art, right? So let's see if I enter a sample, uh, um, a sample text. So let's see, I say, uh, Think Mobly, was that the name of the item? So when I say Mobly, it automatically creates this word art. And, um, you know, this word art is not, you know, as uh, uh, it's not, it's not like what we used to have in the past, right? Uh, but of course you have formatting options here. You can also, you know, apply drop shadows if you want to, you know, reflection uh, if you want to. Uh, but uh, yeah, the term word art actually, you know, reminded me of something. And uh, if you are really an old uh, Microsoft Office user, you would remember what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, so what you can insert, uh, what that someone said is an ancient feature, exactly, very ancient feature. <laughs> so uh, I think they just reused the term for uh, those people that have experience with it. Uh, you can just, instead of trying to create your own customization, you know, what art gives you, um, you know, that, uh, that kind of 3D or maybe 2D um, text. So it's not looking like a normal text, but instead it's looking like an arts, you know, artistic kind of text. Uh, with some gradient fields and all that, but that's not really necessary. And um, I don't, I don't think you you can actually design those stuff yourself if you want to. So you have uh, the option to insert lines, and uh, yes, you might need lines if you're trying to connect objects. So you have that option here as well. You know, you can just use it uh, from here. Uh, remember, I told you about comments, and here you go. This is comment uh, uh, a shortcut to create comments again right here. Okay, so um, back to the insert option. Uh, you can insert a line can also insert a comment, a new slide or slide numbers. Uh, slide numbers is basically, you know, just trying to number your slides so that um, you can have a reference to know that, okay, I want slide one or slide two or slide three. So uh, I think the, the, the next most important thing that I need to show you is um, basically uh, how to uh, set up transitions, right? We don't have any item in here. Let's delete this specific slide and let's set up some transitions. So, by default, when we go on the slideshow, this is very simple. You know, moving from one slide to another is just you know um, direct. So there's no transition happening here. Uh, so I can click on the transition option here, and now I can set up transition. So when I select a specific item, 
I can set up the transition. Right now it says there is no transition, so we can set dissolve, right? Uh, on the second item, we can simply uh, use the, let's say flip, or let's simply say slide from left. And um, let's see what it looks like. So when this item comes in, you know, we have, it's gonna simply slide from left. And um, yeah, so that's just the uh, sample that we've used. Uh, let's add object animations, uh, which will basically, you know, describe the, um, the animation that the object itself would have. So let's use uh, disappear uh, for that object. Let's select another object. Let's add animation and uh, let's leave uh, fly from right. Okay, so let's play this, uh, you know, to see what we have. And um, okay, if I click on this, we have that item sliding and then right. Okay, so uh, that is simply, you know, an example. And of course you can, you can, you know, change the uh, positions, you know, if you want this to appear first or to happen first. So it's kind of like a timeline, but, you know, it's uh, ordered in a very simple fashion. So you just kind of like drag, you know, and change the position, especially when you have multiple items here. So we can go ahead and set in, you know, the slide transition itself. Um, let's say this, we'll set this to dissolve and you can set the speed, you know, to meet slow, medium or fast. And then also you can select the object, right? So this is the object animation. Uh, we want this item to fly in from left and uh, it should be on click. Uh, or you can say after previous. After previous means once the previous item uh, transition is uh, done, the next one should happen, right? So, or you can leave it if you want to use on click. Um, and yes, we can also add an animation to this. We want this to um, spin and uh, this should be uh, probably after previous. Okay, so let's, let's uh, work with that. I don't think I saved that, did I? Let's see uh, if I did. Uh, okay, all right, so I'm going to click on slideshow and uh, I'm going to click. So when I click, the other item dissolved and it went off the screen, which is, you know, wrong, but of course that was uh, a mistake from my end. So uh, when I click again, we have this item, uh, you know, uh, flying. Uh, on the next item, I'm simply going to have the other item flying and this item spin. So uh, basically, you know, that is not a good transition. That is not something you want to do. Um, you want the transition to come in and not happen uh, after the item is showing on the screen. So uh, this is simply how you add, you know, some motions and transition. And of course, uh, you know, you just have to play around with that, you know, to get a hang of it. Um, yeah, you, you can't just, you know, you, you won't master it uh, immediately, but you have to spend some time creating, uh, you know, different objects and using different, uh, you know, transitions and animations for the objects. Um, so that is it. That is basically how you add transitions and animations to the items and, um, yeah, I think that's the uh, um, that's the simple uh, introduction uh, to uh, Google Slide. So we have other we have other advanced options like setting up uh, scripts, setting up um, uh, macros, and all that. Um, I don't think we won't be covering that in this session, uh, but hopefully uh, in the future, if we have another session for that, you will definitely get to learn. Uh, but I hope this covers um, some of the things that uh, you know would uh, help you. Uh, to start creating um, uh, slides, you know, using Google Slide. Uh, you can also apply the same knowledge here in PowerPoint. You know, I personally use Keynote uh, because I'm drawing a Mac, so I can I, I use Keynote, which is the, the uh, preferred option on a Mac. But uh, if I am trying to, you know, uh, work on a, uh, a slide, maybe uh, on the cloud because I don't want, uh, or maybe because I am not with my laptop, uh, I can do that on a different uh, machine, you know, on the cloud. And then I can download this as a PowerPoint uh, uh, file, you know, when I get home, because I can, of course, open a PowerPoint file uh, on, uh, on Keynotes, right? Or I can even download this as a PDF if I want to. So I hope, I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the session. I hope you had fun. If you have any question, I'll just give you two, three minutes. Go ahead, ask a question. I'll, I'll take those uh, questions um, and I would uh, try as much as possible to explain, you know, in detail to you, okay? Thank you very much, and uh, I'll be waiting for your questions.
so um, I think uh, we don't have any questions coming in. So I'm assuming that uh, you understood everything I explained on the call. Thank you very much for joining. And um, uh, for those of you in the front end and back end track, remember we're going to have um, a demo uh, or a dummy, I think that's the right end, dummy session uh, where we're going to be building a, a dummy project. Okay, so I call it dummy session for dummy projects, real sessions for real stuff. Okay, so we're going to be building a dummy project. I, uh, I finally decided to build. Um, uh, a project for you know kind of like profile you know user profile how many of you know about dot me so we're going to be building something similar uh, we are going to be very fast so you'll be asking your questions i'll be answering some of those questions while i'm coding uh, and it's going to be really really fast so and of course it will be recorded and then um, you know uh we'll share we'll share that with you too uh because um we are barely going to have two hours uh per day it's going to be today and tomorrow and then uh, I wanted it to be yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Unfortunately, we had a different session yesterday. So hopefully, uh, within the space of four to six hours, if we include uh, an extra day, uh, let us see what we let us see if we can build, uh, you know, if we can design a UI, uh, build a uh, front end and a back end <laughs> in six hours. Okay. All right. So have a wonderful day, have a productive day, and I'll see you in our next session. By 8 p.m., correct, 8 p.m. West African time. So, um, yeah, bye.